Hey again, guys. So uh, in my uh, earlier video today, I uh, kind of forgot to mention sort of why the Deacon McGuire discussion matters. Um, aside from it being an interesting historical note, you know, that uh, McGuire was manager of Boston and ended up being tr uh, released um, and then found himself over with the Cleveland Naps as a player at the end of the season, right? There's other interesting stuff that goes on here as well. The big question that we have, though, is what do we do with a player like this? So let's go back and let's take a look at him and see what we got. So this is Deacon McGuire. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, increase the size of this again so that you can actually see what's going on. Deacon McGuire was 44 years old in 1908. 1907, he had one game with the Highlanders and then was, I believe he was made manager of the Red Sox here in 1907, and he played a couple of games. Um, looks like mostly pinch-hitting appearances since he had six plate appearances in six appearances. Well, that makes sense. He had himself pinch-hit once in 1908, and it's 1908 really that we care about. If we go over here again to his game logs. This is where we run into the problem, right? So what do you do if you're running a replay and you have a player like this, right? Do you only make him eligible for August 24th, right? Because if you're doing this realistically, technically, Deacon McGuire should be on the Red Sox the entire season. The reason why is because he's the manager of the team, right? See, yeah, 1907, he was the manager. In 1908, he was the manager. You cannot say that, oh, well, he doesn't count as a manager. He doesn't get to come in and do this or to do that. And the reason why is uh, because he is the manager for the, um, well, the length of the season from the start until whenever he goes to Cleveland, whenever he's finally released. I'm assuming that he's released um, uh, after, what is this, um, 115 games of the season. In fact, we could probably figure out exactly which game it is that he was, uh, that uh, caused his release. You say 115. Oh, look at that. That's what, August 27th. He appeared in this game. We'll look one more time on August 24th. So it was just a couple of days later. It's after this doubleheader against the Browns. Um, that the Red Sox lost. They had lost one, two, three, four, five, six in a row. That's the game that he was released at. He was 53 and 62 in sixth place, and they finally figured they need to do something else, and it worked. They had a, a winning streak afterwards. But the problem that we have, of course, is not when we see the manager, right? When we're doing these types of projects, it doesn't matter when he was or was not the manager. What we care about is when we see the player and when is he really on the roster. Again, technically speaking, he's on the roster for the entire season uh, for the Red Sox because he's the manager. He could have put himself in at any given time, right? I'm not aware that he um, was around, um, I don't know, like uh, wearing a suit and tie or something like that to all the games. Um, but it becomes difficult because you're like, so do you keep him on the roster as an active player through August 27th? What exactly do you do, do you do? How do you handle this? How do you deal with this, right? And then the next question that we have, of course, is when is it that he makes it over to Cleveland? We'll take a quick look here again and to see if we can't figure something out. I'm kind of curious to see um, if there's any article about him in uh, the uh, Boston newspapers um, on, uh, what was that, uh, August 28th, 1908? We might as well take a look since we're still uh, working on getting everything up to date and getting everything set up um, uh, for the uh, return of the 1908 season. But really, this is the sort of problem that you got to think about when you're trying to uh, get things set up right and you're trying to uh, make it make your season work and make it make sense, uh, make a replay happen that actually is a replay. Um, because, I mean, sure, he's a guy who uh, played in one game in the season and that's it. But, you know, something uh, something has to happen. Some, there has to be some sort of uh, rule that we can um, play by that allows us to figure out um, how to handle players like this. And so we'll take a quick look here. Um, yeah, echoes of the game. This is probably what we're looking at. I'm not seeing any sort of major headlines about uh, McGuire. Um, and, uh, of course, I'd ask you if you know what's going on. You apparently don't. Just looking through this really quickly, I'm not seeing much. And so uh, that tells me that I'm not 100% certain if that date is correct or not. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on. Other than that, the Red Sox kept on losing. We can take a look at the next page and sort of see what happens. And yeah, you can see that um, there were whole tons of people um, uh, at this uh, Giants-Cubs uh, game in Chicago, by the way. They're estimating like 41,000 or 30,000 who were present. The crowd downtown was estimated at 50,000, on and on. Old newspapers are fun. And it's fun to look up stuff like this and to try to figure out exactly what was happening. Let's go take a quick look at the next page. And yeah, okay, welcome Fred Lake. 
Uh, let good luck follow Jim McGuire. That's got to be Deacon McGuire, right? So uh, let's see, what was his name? James Thomas McGuire. Yeah, so this is when it is official that uh, McGuire left uh, the Red Sox. And so technically, if you're playing with 1908 and you want to be uh, really serious about this, um, and you want him to be on the roster for the amount of time he was actually on the roster, you need to have the 44-year-old on the roster up until August 28th, 1908, um, or August 27th, I suppose. Um, it's interesting, by the way, that uh, it doesn't appear that the uh, Boston Globe knew in advance that um, he was leaving. But uh, yeah, there you go. The new manager, Fred Lake, was anxious to make a good showing and break the troublesome hoodoo and so on and so forth, and of course, uh, Boston ended up winning. So there you go. There's a little bit of uh, interesting uh, trivia. Now, uh, the next question that I have, and uh, we're going to take a quick look and see if we can find this, is uh, can we find um, uh, when uh, Deacon McGuire um, finally went over to... Uh, oh, let's see. We want to look after that, right? So this is going to be um, 8.30, to what, 10.06, 1908. We want to look and see if we can figure out when he went to Cleveland. I don't have a Cleveland uh, uh, paper to look at necessarily. So, I mean, we'll take a look and we'll see what happens, uh, see what we can find. Butte, Montana. This is part of the fun of doing this and doing this uh, research, right? So facts about Deacon McGuire. He was appointed to manager of the Boston Americans. The question here is, is there anything more recent that happened? And it does not look like that. I'm not quite sure why they are... Um, talking about him, he was an old time ball player. Great. So, yeah, this is uh, September fifth, and there's unfortunately not very much information there. So, uh, this is sort of what you do when you look through it and try to figure out who goes where at what point in time, um, and uh, see what happens. Looks like he was, uh, yeah, he was being slated as the next manager of New York Highlanders. This is reported in uh, California, September 25th, 1908. And so we know that he wasn't with Cleveland at that time. Um, and so we'll take a look and see if we can find anything else. I'm seeing New York all over the place. New York Telegram said this and that and the other. Um, we'll have to look and see uh, see if we can find anything if we move this. And by the way, this um, feature... Um, uh, for uh, on uh, newspapers.com to uh, change the date and stuff is not really all that great or that easy to use. Um, so uh, there you have it. Yeah, look at this. Witness also the playing of the Cleveland Naps since Deacon McGuire joined the team. He was not needed to get into the game. Nothing short of injury, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the club figured it would be a good investment to pay him a fancy salary just for the last few weeks of the season that he might import to the players the way to keep cool and to give out their best services in the crisis in which te the team is in now. And so there's another thing that we can look at here. We can look for Cleveland McGuire, and we'll keep this um, up here. Well, it doesn't help us very much. Um, we could also take the dates completely off and just make it 1908 and take a look at that and see if we can find anything here and uh, sort it by the uh, newest paper first and uh, see if we can figure anything out. Here you go, Cleveland Signs. There you have it, Cleveland Science McGuire. So we have figured this out. We would say September 18th, 1908 is the date um, in which Cleveland McGuire um, joins the uh, Cleveland uh, Naps, or, and, and I'm sorry, in which Deacon McGuire joins the Cleveland Naps. And so we have figured it out finally. That's the date that um, you would need to use um, officially. Of course, he didn't play with Cleveland that day, right? Um, I believe. Let's see if uh, Cleveland even played in the major leagues that day. This is where it gets really confusing, by the way, when you're doing this type of research, um, because you have to remember that there are a number of games in which uh, they're not playing against major league competition. But as you can see here, yes, uh, clearly Jim McGuire did not participate in this um, September 18th, 1908 game. In fact, what we could do is we could go take another look really quickly in... Uh, Massachusetts. Now we don't want to lose this one, so we'll go over here to uh, probably this one right here. We'll go take a look at that game and uh, we'll look at uh, the box score of it from uh, September 19th, 1908 and just see if there's any mention of him or not. Um, but that gives us a pretty good idea of exactly what happened when. Uh, there we go. And you can just take sort of a quick look over here and see what you can figure out. 
Um, and there's no mention of him. How about that? So the former manager of the club um, goes and plays for the uh, team that the Red Sox play against, and the Boston newspapers make absolutely no mention of that fact, at least that I can see from a quick glance. And so there you go. This is one of the uh, troubles that you have when you're trying to figure out, you know, where all of these, um, uh, where the uh, these players are supposed to to uh, wind up, and how what uh, on what date they uh, show up at what uh, on uh, which team, and so on and so forth. Now the thing is that transactions like this are actually pretty important, right? Again, you want to make sure that you have the players on the teams at the right time, so that you don't end up with a guy um, being on the team all season long when he actually was um, never on it, or he very rarely played, which is something that happens pretty frequently if you look at uh, replays that people put forward. You also have to think about what do you do with his stats, right? So Deacon McGuire um, in 1908, uh, let's see if I can pull him back up here. Um, he did wind up with a hit. Remember, it was that double that he had. So he hit technically um, uh, 200, um, one for five um, in the course of the season. But the question is, is that really an accurate reflection of his statistics, right? If you were going to say, oh, well, you know, he can play in, uh, he played third base, right, during the one game that he appeared in, having been a catcher like his whole season or his whole career, right? So if you have him at, I'm sorry, at first base, if you have him at first base and you say, oh, well, you know, we're going to have him on uh, playing first base for the Red Sox for the entire season. I mean, does he then hit 200? Is that realistic? Is that not realistic? Should there be some sort of... Uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, adjustment that you should make, especially since the guy was 44 years old, was the manager, was certainly not a full-time player, right? How do you handle this in the replay, right? If you want to make sure that he has his one plate appearance with Boston, do you have him appear in the exact same game? Do you have him appear in a different game? How do you manage that? How do you handle that sort of thing, right? And then for Cleveland, I mean, they stuck him into the very final game of the season when the Naps were actually out of it. Would they actually have done that if they were in first place? Would they have done that if the last game of the season was an important game and uh, they needed to win it to win the um, American League pennant. So there's a lot of questions like this that we can ask and that we really need to think about when we're doing these types of replays. It's fun because, you know, we talk a lot about like the big players, the guys who were the big stars, the guys who played every day and stuff. But the real interesting stuff comes from guys like Deacon McGuire, you know, the manager who put himself in like once, you know, or, or the kid who showed up who, you know, was, I don't know, a kid that Connie Mack brought in on a trial and he had pitched like once for like two innings and then send him back down and we never heard of him again, right? What do we do with guys like this? How do they fit into this big picture? Anyway, we'll talk more about this and think a little bit later. Um, uh, there's always more to say. Hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you later. Bye.